Getting your certification is important for two key reasons. First, it's an indicator of the training you've received. Not only have you participated in training, but you passed a certification exam proving the depth and breadth of knowledge after the training. Certification is also an indicator of ongoing qualification. To maintain certification, a home health aide must take continuing education courses, according to federal law. Second, it's required for services that qualify for Medicare payments. It's a requirement for all Medicare-certified home health agencies to hire certified home health aides for services that qualify for Medicare payments. You keep hearing about Medicaid here and how much it may determine where you work, how much you can earn, and your career growth. In case you're wondering, Medicare and Medicaid are two separate government-run programs. They're operated and funded by different parts of the government and primarily serve different groups. Medicare is a federal program that provides health coverage if you're 65 plus or under 65 and have a disability, no matter your income. Medicaid is a state and federal program that provides health coverage if you have a very low income. If you're eligible for both Medicare and Medicaid, duly eligible, you can have both. They will work together to provide you with health coverage and lower your costs. There are different requirements for training home health aides in each state, so be sure to research the exact requirements in your state. Some may have slightly different education requirements, but in many cases, you do not need a high school diploma or a GED to become a home health aide if you do have your home health aide certificate. If you work for a company that accepts patients with Medicare or Medicaid, formal training is required before you can be hired. A certified home health care agency is a licensed home health care agency that is certified by both Medicare and Medicaid. The services offered by a certified agency are medical and include nursing care, home health aides, physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, nutrition assistance, and social work. Patients who are eligible for home care under Medicare must utilize a certified agency. Medicare has guidelines limiting home care payments. That's the long answer. In summary, the short answer is that most agencies can only hire and employ home health aides who are certified. Yes, you need to be certified. If you want to work at a certified home health agency, you will need to pursue your home health aide certificate. You will have more opportunities for employment and earn more as a certified aide. A home health aide certificate can give you a leg up on the competition and can also factor into potential promotion opportunities down the road. It can only help boost your potential for getting better and higher paying jobs. How do I become certified? Getting your certification is rather straightforward once you know the requirements of the state in which you'll be working. The typical way in which you become certified is, you successfully complete the required training, you pass the test, and then you register in the state. Most states require you to take and pass a competency exam after you've completed the mandated training. You pass the test and you become certified to work as a home health aide in that state. There may be other minor requirements such as registering in a state database. Some states don't even require you to take a test as long as you can demonstrate that you have successfully completed your training. Training and certification can likely be earned in just a few weeks from most accredited schools and educational institutions. To enroll in these programs, you may be asked to complete a physical examination, blood tests, and a background check. You can expect to be spending approximately 75 hours in the classroom with a live instructor. In addition, you will have clinical dates when you will be receiving hands-on training with industry professionals. The regulations and requirements will change over time. There's a growing trend toward requiring certification for healthcare workers, though there may be exemptions for experienced workers such as registered nurses. Non-certified home health aides. Non-certified home health aides are not required to be certified because their level of care is restricted to things that an ordinary person could effectively and efficiently accomplish without medical training. Non-certified aides can provide services such as light housekeeping, meal preparation, and companionship. Direct medical care is not allowed by these types of caregivers, so certification is not required. Visit this link to learn more about the types of skilled and non-skilled home health caregivers. Further, non-certified home aides cannot be employed by a Medicare-certified home health agency, and most agencies provide services to patients who are covered under Medicare. 
By this fact alone, you may be limiting your opportunities to work as a home health aide. You may also be limiting your career advancement and how much you can earn for a living. There are opportunities for non-certified aides. Non-Medicare Agencies Non-certified home care agencies, home care aid organizations, and hospices that remain outside of Medicare do so for a variety of reasons. Often, they do not provide the breadth of services that Medicare requires, such as skilled nursing care. But that's on the supply side. The demand is great for folks needing care in the home. Individuals needing assistance in the home environment often have ongoing personal care needs even though skilled services are no longer required. As a result, some home health agencies offer a private pay, non-certified component within their agency for home health aides to continue providing personal and custodial care. For their family members, hiring a non-medical home care agency directly or privately hiring a caregiver is another option when continued care through a home health agency is not feasible. A non-medical home care agency is an agency that provides home care services which are not considered to be skilled care and or reimbursed by Medicare. These agencies provide what is termed non-skilled supportive custodial care that is supplied by home health aides, certified nursing assistants, and non-certified nurse aides, homemakers, and companions. These greatly needed services range from housekeeping and companion care to assistance with personal care such as bathing, dressing, toileting, and eating. Unskilled care is not reimbursable under Medicare and therefore is paid for privately, or in some cases by private long-term care insurance. A physician's order is not required as the need for care is not deemed medically necessary and patient homebound status not required. A professionally authorized and monitored care plan is unnecessary. These private pay agencies are usually still licensed under authority of each state but licensure requirements and regulations vary widely from state to state, unlike federally regulated Medicare certified home agencies. Most agencies employ their workers, do background checks, and manage payroll and taxes. Most of these agents professionally supervise and monitor their staff with regards to patient care. Non-medical home care agencies play an undeniably big role filling gaps in home care services not covered under skilled care. Unskilled home care services, such as personal care assistance or other cooking and cleaning help, is often what may be needed most and by many to remain in their homes. Private duty aid. You may have heard the term private duty aid. Private duty is a broad term that encompasses all types of in-home care. It includes custodial care, companion care, and live-in care. It also includes care provided by a nursing assistant, a nurse, or another skilled professional, such as a physical therapist. Care is considered private duty when it's being paid for by a long-term care insurance policy or by the patient or his or her family. It can be short or long-term and is often requested by patients that prefer to stay in the comfort of their own home rather than in a nursing home. Private duty services range from companionship care to highly skilled nursing care during periods ranging from a brief visit to 24 hours a day. Private duty caregivers are often enlisted to perform light home management, errands, meal preparation, housekeeping, or transportation to the grocery store, pharmacy, or doctor's office. Medical or skilled aides often care to those who require medically intensive care for long-term chronic conditions, or skilled nursing care following a hospital stay or at the end of life. Examples of private duty home care include nursing care, grooming and dressing, meal preparation, errands and shopping, and transportation. Helping care for friends or family. Serving as a caregiver for a family member is one of the most rewarding jobs you can do. Not only do you get to spend time with your loved one, but you can ensure she receives the best quality care possible. You don't have to worry about strangers who may not be sympathetic or attentive caring for your loved one when you become the primary caregiver. Unfortunately, being a caregiver for a family member carries a price. Caregivers often must significantly reduce their number of hours working outside the home or leave their jobs completely to provide quality care for their loved one. This means that caregivers are spending hours assisting loved ones with daily tasks, cooking meals, taking them to appointments, ensuring their safety and well-being, and providing companionship, 
but are not being compensated for their time. If the family member needing assistance is mentally sound and has enough money and assets to pay a caregiver, your loved one can choose to pay you or another family member for the same services that would be provided by a professional. A proactive employer-employee approach will help minimize stress and family tension. Some key tips. You need to put any awkward feelings aside to discuss needs, wages and paydays, health risks, schedule, and how respite care and caregiver sick days will be handled. Make sure you draw up a contract that includes the hourly wage and services to be provided. Take the time to consult an elder care lawyer to review your contract to make sure it meets tax requirements, deals with inheritances, and is approved by all other interested parties. Lastly, be aware of emotional pitfalls. If family members seem uncomfortable with the arrangement or disagree with the plan, consider a session with a family therapist who specializes in elder care, a family mediator, or other neutral party. Specify services performed, dates, and amounts paid. The paperwork is essential if your family member later applies for Medicaid. Considering the amount of money, you're saving your loved one and the rest of the family by serving as the primary caregiver. You are well within your rights to ask your loved one or other family members if they will compensate you for your time. Overall, you need to know your loved one's eligibility for various government programs, insurance policy benefits, employee benefits, and family payment options. If you hope to become a paid caregiver for a family member, spending a few hours determining your eligibility will be worth it when you get compensated for all the time and energy you give to provide loving, attentive care for your loved one. Follow the rule and report income. As with every paid job, caregivers are legally required to report wages as taxable income. If later your family member becomes Medicaid eligible, but taxes have not been paid, Medicaid will consider the money a gift, not an expense. This could prevent your loved one from qualifying for Medicaid. The IRS, on the other hand, is clear. When services are provided, all money received is a wage, not a gift. Do I need to complete certified nursing assistant training before I become a home health aide? Home health aide training is usually done before you've completed your certified nursing assistant, or CNA, courses and many schools will offer the CNA classes immediately upon completion of the home health aide coursework. Essentially, a home health aide is a certified nursing assistant that has chosen to also complete approximately 40 additional hours of training that's focused on caring for patients in their homes instead of in a hospital or other medical facility. The short answer is no, you don't need to first complete your CNA classes before you can earn your home health aide certification. However, it is not required that you possess a certified nursing assistant certificate before earning your home health aid certification. Ultimately, it's in your best interest to earn both certifications as it will look great on your resume and it will allow you to demand a higher salary. Home health aid versus personal care assistant. Are you wondering what the difference is between a home health aid and a personal care assistant? You're not alone. This is a very common question that gets asked when people are considering a career in home health care. The main difference is the training that's required for each occupation. Personal care assistants, or PCA, are generally required to obtain a certificate from an American Red Cross approved training program. The courses are not expensive and many times can be completed online. Beyond that, there's no other formal training or certifications required to become a PCA. Some agencies may have additional requirements, but that can vary from employer to employer. Most will want you to have a valid driver's license and current insurance in case you need to transport the client. Personal care aides are permitted to perform fewer health-related tasks than home health aides. It all varies by state. In New York, for example, personal care aides who've been trained in approved personal care activities are issued a certificate from an approved training program which must offer a minimum of 40 hours training. To upgrade a personal care aid to a home health aid, they must provide the 35 hours of training. This includes 19 hours of classroom and 16 hours of supervised practical training. Becoming a certified home health aid requires significantly more training than a PCA will receive. Some schools offer a full-time curriculum that allows you to complete the initial training in only a couple of weeks while others have part-time programs that stretch over two semesters. 
After completing the home health aid training, you would be eligible to enroll in the CNA training classes, and most schools that offer CNA training will also offer HHA training.